Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial video on conditional formatting in Excel. Now if you've never come across conditional formatting before, what it does is it changes the appearance or the format of a cell or a range of cells based on conditions you specify. So it makes it super easy to highlight important information in a data set to detect issues, emphasize any anomalies, and also visually analyze data using things like data bars, color scales, and icon sets. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're just gonna run through a few of the different uses of conditional formatting. And I will say that there are many, many more than what we're gonna be able to go through in this video, but hopefully it will give you a taster and you can go on and do some further reading if you like what you see. So let's start out with some basics. Now you'll find your conditional formatting options on the home ribbon, and they're just here in the styles group. You see you have a conditional formatting button, and when you click on it, you get that drop down menu with all of your conditional formatting options. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start out with a very quick example. You can see here, I'm clicked on the test scores worksheet, and I have some students and the scores that they've achieved in different tests for different subjects, math, science, English, and history. And the first thing I want to use conditional formatting for is I want to be able to format or highlight all of the scores that are greater than 75. So maybe the pass mark is set at 75 and I wanna see all of those scores and I can use conditional formatting to do that. So the first step here is just to highlight all of the test scores, jump up to conditional formatting, and the option we're gonna choose is highlight cells rules. And one of the options that we have in here is greater than. So now you can see it says format cells that are greater than, and it's put in a number of 59 for me there. Now I'm gonna change that to 75. And immediately you can see that reflected in my data. I'm now being shown all of the test results that are 75 or above. And I'm choosing to format those with a light red fill and dark red text. Now if I click the drop down, I do have a couple of other different options in there, but at this stage, I'm happy to keep it on red. Click on OK, and there are my results. So very quickly, I've been able to highlight the information that I require. Now maybe, and I'm gonna highlight my selection again, I want to also highlight all of the scores that are less than 30. And this time I'm gonna highlight those with a yellow fill and click on OK. So essentially what I have here are two pieces of conditional formatting working on the same data set. And if at any point you want to be able to see those conditional formatting options that you've applied, if you jump down to manage rules, you can see there the two different conditional formatting rules. Now I'm actually going to delete both of these rules just by clicking on that delete rule button. Click on OK to set me back to my original. So within this conditional formatting drop down and this highlight cells rules, you'll see that you have lots of rules that are similar to that, greater than and less than. We can also choose to highlight any values that are between two numbers that we specify or maybe something that's equal to. So maybe I say equal to 37 and it's going to very quickly show me that result as well. Now for my second example, I'm going to jump across to this album list. And this is just a list of various different well-known albums and the total sales for those albums. Now this time I'm gonna use conditional formatting to highlight cells that contain a certain piece of text. We were looking at numbers last time, this time we're gonna explore text. So it might be that I want to find all of the artists that contain the word Beatles, and I only want to find them in one specific column. So I'm gonna highlight column C, I'm gonna jump up to conditional formatting, I'm gonna to go to highlight cells rules, and I'm gonna say text that contains. And this time I can enter in the piece of text that I'm looking for, which in this case is the Beatles. I can select a fill color, we'll go with green this time, click on okay, 
and there I have those cells highlighted. So lots of different options for you to explore in that highlight cells rules group of commands. Let's now look at the next one, top bottom rules. I'm going to jump back to my test scores spreadsheet and it might be I want to do something different here. Maybe I want to highlight all of the history scores only that are in the top 10%. So what I need to do is highlight the history results, jump up to conditional formatting and this time I'm going to go to top bottom rules and you'll see one of the options we have in there is top 10%. So immediately it's showing me that Natalia and Natalie are in the top 10% of students based on their history results. And if I wanted to, I could adjust this percentage. So if I wanted to see the top 20% of results, I can just use these little scroll handles and modify that. And as you can imagine, similarly, if I wanted to see the bottom 10% results, I have an option for that as well. I also have options in here to find the top 10 items, the bottom 10 items, and also any values that are above or below average. Now the next option in this list is data bars. And I will say that these three options below this line, data bars, color scales, and icon sets, allow you to show what's in your cell in a more visual way. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna highlight the set of maths results first, I'm going to jump up to conditional formatting, go down to data bars, and you have two different groups in here, gradient fill and solid fill. And that's really just the appearance of the bars. So let's start out with a gradient fill. I'm just going to select this first option here. It's the blue data bar. And you can see there in the screen tip, it's telling you exactly what it represents. So it says add a colored data bar to represent the value in a cell. The higher the value, the longer the bar. So if I click on it, I now get a visual representation of the numbers contained within each cell. And if I wanted to, I could select the science results and I could do exactly the same thing. I'm going to go up to data bars and choose a different gradient fill this time. Now, one little tip, if you wanted to just have the data bar in the cell and you didn't actually want to have those numbers listed there. So that's sometimes quite helpful if you are maybe showing data that is confidential or private, maybe it's people's salaries, something like that, and you want to give people an idea of where those salaries lie, but you don't want to actually show them the numbers, this is a good little trick for things like that because you can remove the numbers and just have the data bar representation of the value. So if I do this for the science conditional format that we've just set, I'm going to highlight that column go to conditional formatting and I'm actually going to jump down to manage rules and I'm going to edit this rule. And what you'll see is here in edit the rule description, it's we've got an option here for show bar only. So if I tick that and click on OK and OK again, I now only see the data bar and not those values. Now, just for consistency, let's highlight the column for English, go to data bars, and this time we're going to choose a solid fill. So let's do a solid fill yellow, just so you can see the difference. And finally, history. Back down to data bars. And again, we'll do a solid fill of red. So that's really the difference between gradient and solid fill. The next option we're going to look at is using color scales. And for this, again, I'm going to highlight all of my values. I'm going to jump up to conditional formatting and I'm going to go down to color scales. Now, color scales are kind of similar to something like a heat map. And depending on which one of these you select, and you can have three color scales like this one just here, green, yellow, red color scale, or you can choose two color scales. So this one here is a green, yellow color scale. And what it does is it applies formatting to your numbers based on the value. So if I was to choose this green, yellow color scale, the higher the number in the cell, the more greenish it is, whereas the lower value, the more yellowish it is. And it grades those cells depending on their value. So again, depending on how you want your data to look, you may wish to choose three color scales or two color scales. Now, the final option we have to explore in our conditional formatting menu just here is icon sets. And people sometimes get a little bit confused as to how these work. 
Now, what you'll see in here is that you have a whole bunch of icons divided down into different categories. We have directional, shapes, indicators, and ratings. And you can either choose three icon set, a four icon set, or a five icon set. And which one you choose does actually matter. So for example, if I select this history column again, and go up to conditional formatting, if I decide that I want to choose a three icon set to represent the values in these cells, what Excel essentially does is it will look at the values that I've got highlighted and it will divide it into thirds. So it will work out what the bottom 33rd percentile is, then what the 67th is, and then essentially assigns an icon based on which third the value falls into. So if I select this traffic light system with these arrows, the numbers that fall within the bottom third are the lowest numbers, and so therefore have a red arrow pointing down. The numbers that are within the middle third have that orange arrow pointing to the side, and the numbers that are contained in the top third have that green arrow pointing up. Now if I'd chosen a four icon icon set, Excel will divide it into four parts. If I'd chosen five, it would divide it into five parts. So again, these are just a really good way of providing a visual representation of the data in your selected range. And as with the data bars, if I didn't want the values listed there, I can jump in and I can edit that rule. So let's quickly do that. I can jump up to conditional formatting, down to manage rules. I can edit my rule and I can say show icon only, like so. Now, a couple of other things I want to highlight within conditional formatting is the ability to utilize formulas in your conditional formats as well. So we're gonna do a very simple example. Now, as I said before, you can really go to town with this, with the formulas that you're using, and that would be something for further reading if you felt that that might be useful for you. But I'm just gonna show you very briefly how it works. So I'm gonna start out by highlighting all of my cells again. I'm gonna go up to conditional formatting, and if you want to utilize a formula, you actually have to create a new rule. And the option you want to select here is this one, use a formula to determine which cells to format. And I'm now free to type in the formula that I want to use. So essentially what I want to do here is I want to format all of the cells that contain an even number. So I'm gonna say equals is even which is a function in Excel. Now that alone isn't gonna work. What I need to do is also specify the top leftmost cell in the range that I have selected, which in this case is C7. I then get to set my format. I'm gonna do a purple fill, and we're gonna have, let's have white font. Click on OK. And now I have all of the even numbers highlighted. Now there's all sorts of formulas that you can combine with conditional formatting. And once you've created that rule, again, if you want to manage that rule, you just jump down to manage rules and there you will find your rule, which you can then jump in and edit if you need to make any changes. Now, the final thing I want to show you is how to highlight an entire row. I have so many people come to me with this issue. For example, if I want to highlight all of the rows that contain the name Deborah Ashby, what people in general will tend to do is they'll probably highlight their data, they might go up to conditional formatting and maybe do something like duplicate values. Now, if they do that, they get a result that they're not expecting. It's gonna highlight everything that's basically within the data more than once. What we want is to say to Excel, every time you find the name Deborah Ashby, I want you to highlight that entire row. And the way that you do this isn't particularly obvious in Excel. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight all of our data, excluding that heading row. We're gonna jump up to conditional formatting. We're gonna create a new rule, and we're gonna say use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in here equals, and then I'm gonna look in my data and I'm gonna find the column that contains the data I'm looking for. So I'm looking for it to highlight 
whenever it finds the name Deborah Ashby. So that column is E. And I'm actually going to make that absolute by putting in a dollar sign. And it's row four. And what I'm looking for, so we're going to do another equals in quote marks because it's text. We're going to type in exactly what it is that we're looking for. We're going to set our format. And I'm just going to give this one a background fill of, let's just do a light blue. Click on OK. And there you go. It has highlighted the entire row as opposed to just the names. Now, at any point when you've applied conditional formatting, if you want to remove it, you need to highlight where that conditional formatting has been applied. Go to conditional formatting and you have a clear rules option. And you can choose to clear rules from selected cells or you can clear all of the rules from the entire spreadsheet, like so. So that's just a few different ways that you can use conditional formatting with your data, a very, very useful and powerful option in Excel. As I said, there are so many ways that you can use conditional formatting. So if this is something that particularly interests you, I would definitely recommend doing some further reading. That's it for this tutorial. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.